It is good that most people will never have their daily lives disrupted by a serious crime. However, the few who do often find themselves unfamiliar with the nuances of the legal system. That can frustrate and confuse victims. It can have the same effect on everyday citizens who are simply trying to understand the procedures in a high-profile case. Welcome. My name is Jeff Kidd, and I'm the Administrative Chief of Staff at the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office. We bring to you this video series to explain the criminal justice process in the 14th Circuit and to make the confusing clear. In this ninth episode, we will describe what happens during initial appearances, second appearances, and other pretrial hearings. First, we will discuss the initial appearance. Procedures for these hearings often varied from county to county and judge to judge, but they were standardized by a South Carolina Supreme Court order effective in July 2023. Now, initial appearances are to take place within 45 days of arrest. Its primary purpose is to ensure the accused has secured counsel. Arrangements will be made to procure one for defendants not already represented by an attorney at the initial appearance. Judges can issue bench warrants for unrepresented defendants who fail to appear at these hearings. If the defendant has an attorney and the attorney has provided the solicitor's office and the clerk of court with the defendant's contact information, the defense need not attend this hearing, unless there is also a question regarding the defendant's mental state or competency to stand trial. The purpose of the second appearance is to confirm the status of a case. Defense attorneys can speak with the solicitor about their cases and might receive discovery from the solicitor, though 14th Circuit solicitors will have typically already provided it by this time. Also, the prosecutor will inform the defense of the office's sentencing recommendation. In the 14th Circuit, the expectation is that defendants who want to go into a diversionary or alternative sentencing program commit to doing so at the second appearance. If the defendant intends to go to trial or plead guilty, a disposition date will typically be set. Cases in which the defendant exercises his or her right to a jury trial can involve additional pretrial hearings. Matters of law, particularly those regarding the admissibility of certain evidence or testimony, are to be settled outside the presence of a jury. Sometimes these hearings are held during court week as the trial is taking place. In other instances, some or all hearings might be held before a jury is even seated, typically the week before trial, but sometimes weeks or even months beforehand. A Schmerber motion, for instance, is necessary to allow the state to present to the jury evidence from a person's body. For instance, a DNA analysis of the defendant. In some cases involving the use of deadly force, a defendant might have a right to what is called a stand your ground hearing. South Carolina's Protection of Persons and Property Act provides both civil and criminal immunity for those who use deadly force in legitimate self-defense situations. This hearing can take place any time before a trial. Other common pretrial hearings include res gesti hearings, in which a judge will consider exceptions to the prohibition on hearsay testimony, and Jackson v. Deno hearings, in which a judge will determine whether a defendant's confession was freely given and can be used as evidence at trial. In our next video, we will explain what happens during a guilty plea hearing.